All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Mortgage Insiders Edition. Um, as with me, as always, is Preet Singh. And today we've got a lovely co-host, I guess a, a lovely guest speaker, Trevor. So Trevor is also an agent on our team as well too, uh, Team Alberta. And today we're gonna talk about a very serious conversation, something that you know many could go, go through. Um, it is a tough spot and we're gonna talk about separations, right? This is sometimes something that can happen and, and how do we see this and treat this from a financing perspective? So I guess, you know, Trevor, obviously, um, you know, seeing it in the past as well, like what do you see is usually the first step, right? When a client comes with a separation, what do you see on your end? Uh, the, the first is they're completely overwhelmed as to what it, what is the first step? You know, the, uh, the question that you asked is like, how should I be taking a look at this? So you got to strip mm -hmm. it down to the very basics and first getting the annual mortgage statement, yeah. uh, pulling a copy of title um, to, to make sure that there's flexibility because it can be structured differently. So if there's a lease pendant that's already on title when it's been pulled, you're very limited as to, as to what can be done. Uh, then it's going to the basics of the application, the income for the person that is coming to you, uh, breaking it down. What is it that they do? Where are the sources of income? And if they have kids or not, if they do have children, then it's going to be a separation agreement that is required uh, right away. So mm -hmm. finding out where they are just structurally themselves with income is the best way to start finding out what personal debts that they do have and mm -hmm. a basic application with the context of okay there's going to be a separation are they going to be owing uh, any child support um, are they going to be receiving any alimony mm -hmm. and especially if there's a home involved i mean again like the one question i see all the time is okay kim i'm getting separated we've got a matrimonial home like we've got to divide this we've got to split and really your only options is either you guys sell take the proceeds go your own separate way but most of the time i find that especially if there's children involved somebody has to take that home over right and i'm sure for you've seen it so you know, when clients are going through separation and, uh, you know, they got to figure out what they need to do with this home, obviously there's going to be one party that wants to keep it. What does that look like in terms of qualification then? I know Trevor has mentioned the steps of, of figuring out your application, but now that you've kind of sorted that out, like what does it look like on the application side, mortgage side? So, yeah, first of all, welcome to uh, everyone who is listening to our mortgage, other, other edition of Mortgage Insiders edition, and welcome to Trevor also. And uh, moving further and answering your question, Kim, uh, basically what I have seen is uh, it's a very stressful time for um, all the parties involved in that, in that separation. Uh, what I have always recommended is a start up with a good, uh, basically, let's say sit down and start off with a clean mind and write down everything that joint assets, joint liabilities that you had, and also start also looking for a mediator. It could be a like it could be a person who is basically setting setting up as a counselor or or let's say a lawyer in most of the cases, right? And, and on the income side, uh, you would have to basically see as as you mentioned, Kim, somebody has to take control of that property if the property is involved, uh, the real estate is involved in in this scenario. So the person who decides to keep the property uh, would have to requalify at his or her own income at that at that time. So then those existing debts, basically, the separation agreement will also. Uh, decide who is basically going to pay off which debts with individual credit cards or or joint credit cards or whichever may. Uh, many cases, there's always a joint line of credit. So th those types of uh, basically debts are separated and then uh, bank basically basically asked in favor, like who is going to take care of those debts, right? And the document, the separation document is the only way we can basically find out who is taking care of which debt and same thing goes with the assets the property involved or properties involved uh, bank accounts is the other example obviously dfsas and rrsps are separate uh, but uh, the assets basically are basically are divided in the same way if the liabilities are taken care of one one person then the other spouse is buying out the next person and the other spouse the x right and in that scenario uh, 
you will be taking out equity from the property and paying it off. And if mm -hmm. there is not much equity in the property, then the only option left is to sell the property and, and pay the mortgage out and go from there, right? And then the individual parties will be applying for their own individual mortgages for the next property if they really qualify, if they have the income available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I think like the one thing too, just like I guess like to summarize is that having that separation agreement and to finalize like what the terms are, like who owes who what, it's super super important because that will really dictate you know which path of financing we can do. I know I know Trevor, like I don't know if you've done it in the past, but like you know for certain separations, like you can actually go up to a refinance back up to ninety five percent, right? Like at that, I think you've done something like that. Yes, that has yes. happened. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's almost a chicken and an egg scenario because the client's going to be okay. Well, how do I get the separation agreement in place if I don't know how much I'm going to be able to afford? So it you're you're almost in the process with the client and saying okay, so based on your income, you can support X amount. If we add to the income, we can increase that amount. So and this goes into the insured side as well, where uh, you can have a purchase done from spouse to spouse so you don't have to refinance refinance is one option you refinance the house to pay off the debt to sell the house to get the remainder of the equity but if one spouse is going to be buying the other spouse out it can be set up as a purchase with an offer to purchase written and the debts to be paid are included within the mortgage so then the debts are being paid from the proceeds of the mortgage that the spouse that is keeping the home is keeping but it is possible and that's where it has to be within the separation agreement so you're almost structuring it with your client which is why it's it's not advisable to represent both clients mm -hmm. uh, if both mm -hmm. clients come to you uh, you have to work within the best interest of the one client so there may be a conflict of interest because it mm -hmm. has to be disclosed to both parties well you both have this option yeah, uh, yeah, but to answer your question, yes, you can do high ratio financing and you can also be classified as a first time home buyer again because of the separation. So in a situation where there is no equity in a home, it's being sold and it's a wash after all the debts. Neither party is getting any money from the actual sale proceeds because it goes to paying out the debts and they walk away with a clean slate. Mm -hmm. If the client does have RSPs, they are classified as a first time home buyer and can take up to 30,000 for a new purchase. Mm -hmm. And I think not only that, too, but it's just like I, I know for our viewers listening out there, you know, if you're going through a situation like this and you are going to be getting some type of alimony. So whether it be child support income or spousal support income, do you know that lenders do view that as additional income to help you qualify as well, too? So if you're stuck in that situation where, you you know, you need to buy that home from your spouse and maybe your income, you know, before you guys were combined income, now you're separated income and let's kind of slash in half, like. Do you know that if you are receiving some type of alimony, child support, CCB income, uh, spousal support, we can add that into your application, right? That can be used to help you qualify for this refinance. Or even if you're looking to, you know, sell the home and go your own separate way and buy a new home, that extra income can be helped to utilize for that as well, too. Now, like, I'll, I'll throw this question out to you guys. Like, what do we do? And, and again, I see this a lot, too. Clients are going through separation, and they just don't have a finalized separation agreement. So what is your suggestion on that, then? Like, what can clients do in that case? Like, what, what would you recommend? You want to go first, Bree? <laughs> uh, sure. It, most of my experience is... Uh, where I have basically dealt with these kind of scenarios, the banks always have put down a condition on the application that they do need a separation agreement, uh, which is finalized, right? We can provide the bank a bit with a, let's say, a temporary document and give them an idea that this is what the lawyers or the mediators and the both parties have decided to go further with, like X amount of spousal support or, or lump sum buyouts or uh, child support if involved, right? But the banks, in my experience, they have always asked for a final signed copy from the court or or whichever way the lawyers if they have done it uh in some scenarios i have heard and maybe trevor you have more experience with that that a staff declaration could be used and 
I, I have honestly I don't have any experience on that. Maybe you can add, add on to that, Trevor. Yes, a stat deck can be when it's. Okay. Uh, um, oh, the term just slipped my mind. Forgive me. Uh, uh, when it's uh, uncontested divorce. Uncontested. So okay. it, it it would be two individuals that they they don't have any offspring. Uh, they don't really have any assets, so they're just saying no. We're, we're just leaving each other. We're not contesting this. Mm -hmm. um, that the division of assets, there is nothing, and so a stack deck can be used in those certain situations. Makes but sense. when there are children involved, uh, as you were saying, Preet, the majority of the lenders are going to want to see at least something mm -hmm. within draft copies saying yeah. this is going to be child support payment either being received or paid so that they can debt service. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So I yeah. guess, guys, you know, it is definitely, um, you know, a tough situation. And I always like to say that it is going to be unique, right? Every um, person's separation is totally going to be unique. And that's why my recommendation for our listeners is always reach out to your mortgage professional if you are definitely going through uh, this process, right? Like there are options for you. Uh, and there's no, you know, black or white answer. Everyone's case is going to be very, very different. The outcome will be different from one to another. I think like to kind of end it off here, guys, do you guys have any best tips? or practices for anyone who may be going through this? We'll start with uh, with you, Trevor. Any best tips or practices? Breathe. Yeah. Just breathe. It, it, it's going to be very overwhelming. Yeah. But that's where working with a professional, that's where you can just throw out the anxiety, but then just realize, just breathe. Step by step, small manageable bites. You'll get through it. Yeah, Pre. Um, the thing I would recommend on top of what uh, Trevor already mentioned is uh, documentation. Uh, I know it's a stressful time, but sometimes in the heat of emotions, you basically don't keep the track of the documentations. It could be uh, other spouses taking care of. There are always dominant spouses in a household. It could be he or she basically taking care of the finances in the household, right? So sometimes, like in my household, sometimes I basically take care of the uh, example wise, I will take care of certain things, but my wife will take care of the other things. So documentation, uh, the verbal is nothing in, in the financial world, uh, whether you go in front of the court or, or a judge or a bank or anywhere, right? So keep a track of your documentation, politely ask for copies from the other spouse, and that will go a long way, right? And that will make the whole process smoother and it will be respectful to each parties involved, right? So yeah, again, uh, as Kim and Trevor mentioned, it, it, we understand uh, as a human being that it's, it's, uh, things happen, it's a stressful time, and many professionals are available. We may have other resources if we cannot find those answers. We may have other resources to help you out, right? So uh, do reach out to either one of us, and if you're going through these tough, tough times right now, and we would be happy to help you out. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in to another episode here of Mortgage Insiders Edition. And I guess we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you, okay. everyone. Thank you. Guys. Thanks for having me today. <laughs>